happiness. The word does not seem immediately synonymous with market research, but since the birth of consumerism, corporations have been keen to try to discover, tap into and exploit what they see as the key to happiness. This was in fact the name of an extensive piece of market research conducted in the 90s by a shoe manufacturer. With over 500 focus groups and 2,000 head-to-head interviews or depths, they hoped they would uncover the secret. The results, however, were both disappointing and disturbing. None more so, perhaps, than the interview conducted with Susan Thompson of Shawlands, Glasgow, 34 years old, childless and recently divorced. Susan was rather nervous and openly admitted that the only reason she was doing the interview was because she had too much time on her hands, having also recently been laid off from work. The interviewer guided her back to the central question. What was the product in your happiest retail experience ever? Susan said they were a pair of shoes in tan colour with a two inch heel and a Victorian style by the designer known as Chloe. The interviewer asked where the point of purchase has been and was told a long story about how Susan had seen these in a window years back and they reminded her of her granny and of her student days when she was quite indie. But they were too expensive anyway, and this was when she was married. Her and her then husband had found it impossible to conceive children, and this led to the split. So she decided after the trauma to do a bit of self-esteem shopping. Was that when you found your perfect Chloe's shoes? The interviewer asked. No, 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 Susan said. They were long out of date by then and everyone was wearing pumps or stilettos. Me in pumps or stilettos? Come on. So I was pretty depressed, not just about that, but lots of other things. Totally slashed my wrists actually, if you must know. The interviewer tried to lead her back. So when did you come across your happy purchase? And here Susan digressed again because a friend of hers, Debbie, knew about her desire for these tan leather Victorian Chloe shoes and bought a pair for herself online and that really pissed her off. Because Debbie was always copying her and getting there first and there was no chance of borrowing them from Debbie because she was a size 3. And anyway, this was a year before and they'd stopped even making them. The interviewer pressed the question as to where and when again. Susan went off on another tangent and talked about how hard it is being single again and online dating and going to Cumbernauld for this interview and then overnight for this date with this guy and waking up in his bed and he was too square and she felt like a whore but then just before getting her bus back she thought she'd kill some time in the shopping centre just because it was next to the bus station and the bus station was minging. And then... Well, she was just looking for a coffee and looking at all the young lassies and thinking how much cooler and slimmer and trendier they were. And then, by the doors of John Lewis, on this discount rack. There they were, she couldn't believe it, in the right colour, which might actually be called teal, not tan. And her size, they were her size, nine, because she had large feet and her husband had never liked that. And they were only a fifth of the original price and the side said end of line clearance. So this was like the last pair of Chloe's shoes in the world and like only 30 quid. Okay, said the interviewer, so price is a factor for you and exclusivity. No, 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 Susan said. Fact was, right, there was this old deer in this fancy coat and as soon as she saw her looking at them, the old bitch picked them up and walked right to the cash register. Okay, the interviewer said. So I went up to her, what do you think I said? Here the interviewer was thrown, as it was unusual for an interviewee to ask questions, over and above the usual ones about how much they would be getting paid, and when it would be over, and if they would get their promised free gift bag. Right, Susan says, so I'm running after her. I don't normally use language like this, she says. Go on. So I said, excuse me, those are my fucking shoes, by the way. I mean, I don't normally talk like this, but I want those shoes for over a year, like, right? Okay. So this was your happiest retail experience? Yeah, no, well, the old bitch wouldn't let go. So we're both tugging at the shoes, and I'm saying, if you didn't fucking let go, you're gonna break them. And I don't normally talk like this. So I said to her, if you don't give me those shoes right now, I'm gonna smash your face off your shoulders and stick it up your arse. Okay. Well, 
and she was fine with that. So then I paid for them, and that was that. Mind you, I just thought, what an arse. I mean, because, I mean, really, they were just a pair of shoes, right? Susan received her complimentary gift pack of perfumes and lotions and a cheque for £50. It was observed that she was not wearing her favourite shoes during the interview. The findings of this interview and many like it pointed to some rather alarming facts about happiness and consumer choice. Rather surprisingly, factors such as affordable prices, pleasant retail environment and a wide range of up-to-date fashionable products factored low on the happiness scale. What hit the top every time was the same story, one of struggle and scarcity of an individual overcoming terrible odds to possess their product. The greater the obstacle, the greater the happiness. All the factors common, it must be said, to food cues, to rioting, looting and revolution. Of course, it was not possible or advisable to try to recreate any of these conditions in a modern retail environment. So, the study was shelved and no further research was done on the subject of the key to happiness.